Uh, sir. Ya. Yeah. Uh, saya dah try semalam yang uh, tukar option ni. Okay. Saya tukar pada quarters to simulator. Uh-huh. Tapi uh-huh. lepas saya tukar tu, bila saya run simulation, dia jadi di sini je. Dia hilang. Haa, dia hilang. Tutup. Ni buka uh, open the quarters window. Go to assignment, settings. Go to EDA to setting. Go click simulation. Tap the simulation tab on the right. Choose model sim altera. Uh, language change to very long. Alright, okay. Uh, try to simulate. Simulate, simulate. Uh, the not compile. Not, uh, not comp- Guys, compile and simulate is different, alright? Compile is you press that play button at quarters window. Simulate means that you are simulating your waveform, which is your waveform, okay? Please don't repeat this silly mistake again. Come on, guys. This is the fourth week, right? I mean, you should have been, you know, settle all the problems. Go ahead. Same, too. All right, so... Try to fix it. Come on, this is fourth week, right? Oh, guys, don't waste your time. I'm not sure what you guys are doing. Right. Okay, let's go to other student. You have to settle your 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 problem uh, this week, said Shazwan. Okay. All right, sorry, sir. Uh, you let me know after you're done with it. So let's go with other student. Uh, who else haven't presented with them? Go and check the name. Uh. Okay, uh, Hanis Atira. Yes, sir. Yeah, go share screen. Satira. Share your screen, please. Go ahead. Show what you have done for the previous lab, right?
Okay, show me how, how you limit, how you stop the number. What is this? Atira, show me your code. Explain, explain the code a bit. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Okay, this is uh, my code. Okay, what's the task is asking you guys to do for the for the counter? Sir? Yeah. Can you hear me, uh, Atira? Uh, for this counter. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, sir? all right. But it's a little bit lagging. Sir? Okay. Okay. Sorry, my line is slow. It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, for this lab, uh, we have to start uh, the clock until our last two digit number metric, right? So okay. my number metric is 49. So this is what I've done. So you're not you're not getting the result. 49. It's not, show me where's 49. Hmm. Cannot see any 49 number. This is until 16. Yeah. Then another 16. No, cannot okay, like that, honey. I, I think, what should, should I call you, honey, or Atira? <laughs> Uh, honey skin. This is, this is wrong. I mean, like, guys, just imagine. I mean, like, no, I'm, I'm talking in general, right? Because if I'm giving you guys lab tests, you guys are gonna fail this. You know, the lab test. This is completely wrong. You guys misunderstood it. Any, any of you wants to comment why, she, why she can get up until fifteen maximum? Because it is a four bit counter yeah yeah because she's using four bit counter honey's using four bit what's the maximum number you can represent using four bit uh six, 15. yeah maximum 15 right so yes. your last two metric number yes. is what honey's 49 49 so how many bit you need to represent 49 Anis, how many bit you need to represent 49? Sorry, sir, I'm blue. Huh? Anis, are you okay? <laughs> no, but sorry, sir. Calm down. This is normal, you know. Yes, relax. So answer. I mean, how, how many bits you need to present? You, uh, you need to represent 49. J just use to the power, right? 2 to the power of 2, right? 2 bits. Uh, you got 4. Right? You can represent 4 number. 2 okay. to, uh, uh, to the power of 3. How many you get? So how many bits you need? Uh, eight bits. You, uh, you got to be kidding me. Two to the power of eight. How many? How much you get, Hanis? Wait, wait. Guys, this is fundamental. This is your digit two fundamental, right? And 
Come on guys, don't take this subject for granted, right? You guys have to do some homework, you know, do some digging. Don't just copy the code, run it, then you think you got it. I need to the... Uh, to the power of seven, sir. To the power of seven. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I want you to fix this. What about memory? Have you tried the memory? Uh, yes, but I not compile again, so it's a bit. Yeah, open it, show it to me. Wait, uh. I just get ready, okay? I want you guys to try to change the code, try to compile, you know, don't just get the code from your friend, try run it, then happy you got it, right? You know, coding, copying yeah. without trying to change it, you won't learn anything. Just wasting your time, you know, might as well just drop the subject, wasting my time too. Right, so I want you guys to be good at it, right? So at least you need to try. Right, so then, then I can, I can, you know, give you fair marks, you know, so that knowing that you have already put an effort in this subject. Right, go ahead, try it. No, uh, run the ALU one, uh, Hanis. Mm, that one. No. It's taking too long, honey. Yes, sorry, what? sir. My laptop. Your processor, what processor you're using? AMD A9. You go ahead, run the simulation. Yeah. 
Have you have you yeah. have you done the waveform before? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so just I... open it. How to open it? Open, Hanis. Open, not open project. Go to open. Showing the all type of files. Stuff noisy, Anis. What are you doing, Anis? <laughs> hey, yeah. Anis. What happened? This is week four, Anis. This one. You know the type of file. So you select the type of files. VWF is not there. So list all type. Aduh, Anis. How many the rest of you are still, I mean, like, don't know how to do this, guys? This is week four, guys. This file. Okay, go, go, go click open, Anis. Click open. <laughs> Okay, then uh, type, right? The type to, uh, no, the down, yeah, go to rotor, yeah, uh, type, yeah. Uh, so all files, go to all files, okay? All right. Uh, so which one your waveform? Pick the waveform one. And it's waveform, VWF. Anis, what's that, Anis? Waveform, VWF. Yeah. Uh, what happened to you, Anis? You go run, run the simulation. Okay, explain to me. Uh, so, uh, the first input is last digit 9. So, second input is second last digit 4. So, um, this is from the code. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, What's that? Result. What does 0, 0 represent? 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So zero 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 represent uh, the uh, uh, plus okay uh, mm -hmm. so zero one uh, minus uh, zero one zero is n on zero one one is r so here okay zero 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 plus so nine plus four is uh, Thirty zero zero one is minus so nine minus four is five. So Which one did did you five. get thirteen? Uh, Hanis? for the plus uh, D. Yeah, D means what? Uh, zero zero D thirteen. Okay, alright, go ahead. 
Ringgit sah. Okay, so okay, for, 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 for the N, uh, what did you get? Uh, zero, zero, zero. Why? Why did you get zero, zero, zero for N? Uh, uh, because uh, in binary nine is zero 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 one zero zero one in first. Okay, so. 1, 1 and 0 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 okay. is 0, all right. 1 and 0 is 0, so this is 0. Alright, so thank you. Thank you, Anis. All. Thank you, sir. Right. Sorry, sir. No problem. Alright, guys, this is just a drill, alright? So, no, no, no hard uh, taken, right? So, just relax. In the in the industry, I mean, like they they'll not even give you any face, right? Uh, so be ready. If if you are nervous, you know, just calm down. I mean, like because you are the one who control yourself, right? So that's why preparation is very important. If you if you prepare well, then I mean, you wouldn't have tr trouble, you know. If you guys trying to do the demo, or showing your your tasks whatsoever, right? Okay, now let's go to the next person. Yeah, in the meanwhile, if you guys have any question, can can just ask me, right? So, uh, it's done. Who else? One use one. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, share your screen. Okay. Can see my screen? Yep, you can see your screen. Okay, uh, so this is the uh, waveform. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so this is the two input. Uh, this is based on my metric number. Uh, okay. The first input is six and second is three. Mm -hmm. And for when the ALU control is zero, zero, mm -hmm. it will perform the uh, add operation. All so right. six plus three is nine. Mm -hmm. And then when zero, zero, one is subtraction. So six minus three is three. And then zero one zero, it will perform the uh, end operation. So when zero one zero is uh, end operation, so um, you can zoom in a bit to make the the bit clearer for the result. You can zoom in. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, one and zero is become zero. One one is one, and one zero is zero. Okay. And when zero one one is uh, all operation, so uh, one zero is one, uh, one one is one, and one zero is one. All right. So yeah, uh, that's all. Thank you, Yushuan. Okay. Thank you. Muhammad Zainul Abun. Muhammad Zainul Lari. Uh, you know who, who are you, right? 
Zainul, Muhammad Zainul. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, share screen. Zainul Arifin. Okay, all right. Yeah. Can you share screens right now? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so you like select file the job. Good. No. Guys, you need to be ready, all right? So just be ready. I call your name. Everything is ready in front of you. This is our lab session, right? Don't, don't, oh, um, so why you guys don't, cannot understand this simple instruction? Guys, whenever you have compiled it, the file is ready, right? Whenever you have the waveform, just open it and simulate it, right? Don't waste your time and don't waste other people's time. Faham tak, Zainal? Faham tak. Yes, sir. Yeah, open it. Open it from your your uh, quarters. Hmm. Oh, I'm not sure what's wrong with you guys. Come on, you are third year student. I mean, simple instructions you guys cannot understand. No, don't create a new one. Open your existing one. You have it, right? Open your existing one. Yeah. Um. You guys are not paying attention to what? I'll mean, just show the same thing to Hanis, right? What the heck, guys? Dia baru balik daripada hantar mak saya kerja ni Dia saya tak mak, sama sama amat sikit You didn't tell me right Zainon? You tell me you gonna join late? Zainon? Yes sir did, did you let me know that you going to join the lab late because you send your mom? No sir Ha huh, then? Don't, don't give me silly excuse lah guys I know you guys have other matter, I have other matter too right? But respect your lecturer, right? If you have something, let me know. Then I know you you are not ready, right? Okay, sir. Don't give me silly excuse like that. Now open. How to open it? Come on, guys. This is morning and you guys already make my day terrible. Open. Open the file. How to open the file, Zainal? File, go to open. Okay, then files of type two, go select all. You cannot see waveform there, yeah. Go select all type down there at the bottom. Under the file name. Okay. Yeah, me. Ah, uh, go, okay, go all files. Okay, then select the waveform, dot WVF. Dot WVF. 
。ずるずるずるずる。うん。あれ寝るぞやねん。うん。はい、ゴシミレリ。はい、スピニョリザ。So, uh, for A, this is my last metric number. X and B, my second last metric number. Mm -hmm. This is so, zero, 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 one, one, zero, 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 one, and one, zero, zero. Okay. So the output is being like this. The two of us are actually known. What's the output? Is it? What's the output? Why, why did you get the output like that? Explain. All right, thank you, Zainal. All right, let's go to other student, uh, Muhammad Nabil. Hey, guys, next time you get, if you guys are not ready, please don't join my lab, right? Or just drop the subject. If you have no interest in this, uh, you can just drop the subject. Uh, oh, hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I will present my screen. Are you ready, uh, Nabil? If you're not ready, uh, then yes. present. You're ready, yes, okay, go, go ahead, present. Uh, we are. Okay, this is my waveform. And I did uh, the last number with my metric number, A and B. Okay. And then uh, for the result, uh, if in fact, uh, we, you will do the operation. So the first one, uh, you will do uh, addition. So one plus one equals to zero. And then the second one is subtraction, uh, one minus one. So it will equals to zero. And the third one, uh, n operation. So one n with one, uh, it will go one. And one or with one, it will go uh, one. So okay. that's all. All right, what about the counter? Show me the counter. The counter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you come to have it? Wait, uh. So this is for the counter part. Mm -hmm. uh, wait.
Okay. So the counterpart, um, it will count until my uh, last metric number, which is one one. Show me your code. How how you do it? Or you just do from the simulation? Hi, uh, I do like the lab that one, lab lab that. Yeah, guys, but but I'm not expecting you to to um to get the result just from the simulation. You have to change your code, right? So you have to enable the counter the whole time. It's gonna count and it's gonna automatically stop by itself when it reach your final uh, two digit of your metric numbers. Oh, I see. But you have to find way how to do it, right? But, All right. No, because you have to do it because uh, we're going to give you guys lab test. Right? So the, in the lab test, we're going to tweak a bit, do some changes. Of course, it's going to be harder than uh, what you guys have done, right? Because we want to test you and give marks on this. So we have to make sure that you guys really understand this part. All right, now you have to try that. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, let's go to uh, Nick Nur Soleha. Share your screen. Are you ready, Nick? Yes. Uh, Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so, uh, share your screen. Okay, this one is for the counter one. Nick, can um, I see your screen, Nick? Okay, you have to share your screen first. Um, okay, this one is for the counter one. I, uh, my uh, measure number is anti-25. So I changed the counter from 0 until 4 because 5-bit. Uh, and then I change this one, 5-bit, 5-bit, and then the binary is 5-bit. And then so the simulation waveform is this. So I, uh, it's count anti-25. So because uh, and then I check the, I change the reset and until the numbers that I want. Yeah, until twenty five. Okay, all right. So after this, try to change it within the code, right? I don't want okay. to manipulate the waveform. Okay, show me your ALU part, Nick. This one is the, my ALU one, and then this is my waveform. Ah, this one. All right. So my measure number is two and five. So this one is. Ah, uh, eh, uh, yes. Okay, this one is ah. Uh, a five and two, all right. So uh, this one is from the coding. It says that and the plus minus and and all. So this one is uh, for the plus one. So one and zero is one. Zero and one is one. One like this. And then this one is for the substrate one. And then this one is uh, n one. Everything is zero because uh, the n one and zero and then become zero. Zero and one become zero. One and zero become zero. And then the one is r one. So one or with zero, the one, uh, same as others. And then this one, uh, it becomes zero, 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 zero. Because from the code itself, it says that uh, if A uh, lesser than B, uh, it's going to be one, one. If A is lesser, but mine is bigger, so it becomes zero, zero, zero. So that's why my, um, uh, this one so becomes zero, 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 zero. It's good. And, Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's go to. Uh, uh, so I have, I have problem. So yes. What problem you have? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I yeah. share my screen. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so see, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, this for my ALU part, right? Okay. I have alternate the A and B for the front part and the behind part. I have reverse it uh, for the okay. uh, so now is B, B is larger than A. So for the hundred just now, uh, one zero zero, the coding here says that if A uh, smaller than B, the all result will become one. Yep. And this is become zero, right? Or become zero if yeah. so. But for here, I only get the last digit got one only. We suppose all become one, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. 
Okay, uh, show, show me the code. Uh, again. Okay, okay. Let's look here. <clears throat> okay, let's look into the code. Right? So, what is actually the code is doing? When bit uh, ALU is ALU control is one zero 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 begin if so A if A is lesser than B result uh sorry uh yeah this is correct uh Jinyang it is just only gonna uh output one sorry it's not all bit one uh yeah it is because this is decimal yep output okay okay what which is correct yeah right so your your simulation is showing showing that you got the correct result huh? because it is decimal one got it okay. if you change the z01 binary you change to decimal of course you get one yeah? oh okay no worries. right okay thank you sir okay all right any other question guys so i have a question uh, go ahead Can you see my screen? Yep, can see it. So, uh, I have a question about the code lah. Mm -hmm. What is something, uh, sometimes uh, the the input and output uh, is declared only like one time in this bracket, but sometimes it's declared in the bracket, after that still declare one more time outside the bracket input output. Okay. All right, that's a good question, right? So it I mean that that is showing that uh, there's a various way of doing it, right? So there's no one correct way, and then the other way is wrong. No, both ways are correct. Okay, if you see, uh, for the second one, right, the oh. in the four bit counter, they just declare the name within the uh, module, right? So count, enable, clock, reset. Mm. But you don't know what type of the the input is it input or is it output, right? According to the lab one, the lab one here, they say input must be list first, but at here, the uh -huh. count, the output is list here, uh, list first. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a, that I mean, that, that according to lab one, right? So that's uh. a good practice. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so yeah, in coding, we have a good practice so that, uh, you know, uh, where all the coders, right, all the programmers, we are holding into that, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, understanding. Oh, okay. Yeah, so whenever we do coding, we we'll try to follow the standard so that when we transfer our code, it's hmm. easy for other programmer to understand our code. Lah. So same as C programming, right? That's a type, you know, uh, indention, how many space you need to use, right? Oh, yeah, so so it's not code. a must, lah. just want no, to no. let others know only. Lah. Correct, correct. It's not a must. Oh, okay. Yeah, then, it's, it's really depend on what you declare after that, whether it's input or output. Okay, uh -huh. okay. Then one more thing is, may I know the function of this ne uh, negative edge? Uh? Because I think if I didn't add this, my code also will will run like what is functioning now. Uh? Okay, all right. Okay, uh, let's show the code. Okay, all right. So what, what is always uh, the function of always, uh, right? So always means that it's gonna check, you know, uh, mm. whatever changes that happening to the signal that you put in the bracket. Okay. So that is always okay. So the first one here in, in this case, there are two signal that being checked regularly, right? So the first one is clock, but clock is only being checked whenever mm. the, the the input is at a positive edge. Okay. Okay. And then or so I mean so it can be or so it's not n so either one will 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 trigger the functions uh, at the bottom or at negative edge of the reset n signal so when when the reset signal is changing from one to zero okay right so at the negative edge then it's gonna do the checking oh uh, okay. okay 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 understand thank you sir right. Any other question, guys, before we proceed?
All right, so if no, I'll, I'll, I'll go and show, uh, the, uh, try to explain. Uh, Hello, sir. Oh. Yeah, it's that. Go ahead, sir. Um, sorry, sir. I was wondering, uh, can we do a for loop inside uh, an if statement, sir? For loop inside if statement, uh. Yes, sir. Meaning, <coughs> if something, and then the, 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 I mean, if something right, mm -hmm. then if something is um correct, then can we do a for loop for the statement? Uh, can. Can. Uh. Uh oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. All right. Okay, all right. So, uh, thank you for the question. So, I'm 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 really happy if I get question from you guys uh, because that is a sign that you guys start think to have you know some uh you know interest in this subject. So, I think that's a very good thing to have. So, for the rest, you know, guys, I mean, like I'm I'm just trying to changing the tone to you know to to be you know like uh, strict a bit. You know, so you guys don't, don't, you know, don't feel uh, anything bad today. So it's just about, you know, trying to to get you guys serious for this. Because trust me, this is not easy subject, right? This is going to be one of the toughest subjects that you're going to face. But if you are, have good interest in this subject, it's not going to be a problem for you guys. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm forcing you guys right now, trying to do the example, you not know, try to change, play with it uh kevin can you mute your mic all right thank you right so that you guys because there's no other way you know to develop the interest in this subject you have to force yourself you know play with the coding change the coding and so that you know and understand deeply what is you guys are doing right in this uh lab all right so uh let's go into uh lab four right okay let me share my screen That you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. All right. All right. So, uh, this is, uh, the simulation that I've done. So we just run the simulation. Let's wait for the result. So this is what I'm expecting you guys to do, right? When I ask you to show your screen, right? Don't, don't show me that to mean you compile again. I mean, you don't have to do that. I just want to see the waveform simulation, unless I'm asking you to change the code and compile it. Right, so, okay, this is what I've got, right? So, okay. Now, actually, what are we doing here, right? So, and then, uh this is about control in in uh syllabus you guys already cover until chapter what right now is it chapter three right chapter three uh chapter two is performance chapter three is getting what topic last week guys counter regarding what yeah week three what's the 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 the, the title of the Sub, uh, uh, chapter Hardware and software approach Hardware and software approach Really? Ah, uh, okay, top level view of computer function Okay, that's good Alright, okay Okay, uh Let me explain this to you guys, right? Try, try to make sense you know what what we are learning okay uh right so this is computer right so let's say uh, you have a computer right computer right then uh here is your processor let's go a bit, a bit. so here is your processor processor 
Okay, and then uh, here's your memory. This is your main memory, right? So your main memory is located outside of the processor. It's not inside of the processor. So uh, within the processor, what you have, you have ALU. So that, that's, that's why we are doing the, the EL, ALU emulation, right? Because we want to make sense of what you guys are learning, you know? So you have, okay, forgive me, my terrible writing here. And you, okay, oh, okay, <laughs> well, it's terrible. And you, okay, All right. So this is your arithmetic logic unit, and it is a must in a processor to have it, right? To run all those operations. Of course, it's going to be even uh, more complex uh, operation, right? Okay, uh, and then we have uh, main memory. So what we are trying to emulate is main memory, but actually main memory, memory is not sitting within your processor, right? So your processor needs to have uh, one of the closest memory, right? Within uh, the, the, the processor, so you need to have, they call it register, right? So register is the uh, type of memory that is closest to ALU. It is within uh, the, the processor. All right, because we want to get rid of going out and try to pick up something from the main memory because this is going to take a lot of time, right? Because the speed here is very fast and then the speed of main memory is not as fast as the processor. All right, so th there's, there's a bottleneck here. So that's why the, the processor, uh, as much as possible, is trying to reduce you know, the time that they need to go and fetch anything from the main memory. So that's why you have cache here, right? So within the uh, processor, you're going to have an internal uh, memory storage, right? So they call it as cache, right? So if you want to buy a processor, these are the spec that you need to check, right? So normally there are a few specs that you're looking into, right? The first one is a frequency, right? So what are the, what is the execution frequency? If you guys look in the history of processor, right? So we started from, uh, you know, of course, before that, uh, Pentium, right? Then Pentium, uh, Pentium 2, then Pentium 4, then goes into I, right? So I3, I5, I7. So before, right? Before, before Intel go to duo, right? Uh, Pentium, they are using only a single processor. Right, so there's only one small, uh, sorry, one processor within the, the chip, right? But as the technology evolves and then the silicon technology evolves, uh, the transistor size becomes smaller and smaller. The designer found out that, okay, to increase the performance, we, we cannot just increase the frequency because as you increase the frequency, of course, you can process uh, many things, right? So this is frequency right so this is your frequency but if you have faster frequency right then you can execute many more things right so uh before before they have parallel multi-core what they did is that they keep on increasing the frequency so that's why if you look into history uh the the frequency of a processor keep on going up so i think last at my time i remember it goes up until four gigahertz so whoever have a processor that is running at 4 gigahertz is like a, on the top notch uh, processor at that time, right? But then the, the designer found out, you know, when, when you are increasing, keep on increasing the frequency, what happened is that it, it keeps on generating many heat, right? Where, where we don't want, we don't really want because we are not running a server, right? If you are running a server, of course, you have AC room, you know, you have a... Uh, near to perfect cooling condition but for a pc then I mean it's hard or, or a laptop right we don't want it to generate too much heat that's why if you look into performance computer right i mean normally uh they're gonna have a special uh heating right heating system i'm oh, sorry not heating cooling system in the in the cpu right they, they are even they're using coolant right whatsoever why because high performance they generate a lot of heat and then you need to remove the heat as much as possible 
to keep the performance going uh, as you want as you want right okay so uh, they found out so we cannot keep on just keep on increasing the frequency to increase the performance so we need to create a multi core right so that's why they come up with the uh, multi multi uh, multi core processor instead of having only one processor within uh, that that uh, chip so they have a multi right so if you look into specification let's say i5 right so they have options they have how many core right it's not necessarily five cores inside it so you have to look into the spec so we are expecting a, i mean the many cores that they have uh, of course the better per performance that the cpu can perform and then the other thing that you are looking into performance of course the 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 size of the memory that they have right so but why I mean, if if really that I mean by having larger memory within the, the the processor chip will increase the performance. Why the designer don't want you know to make as much or to include as much as possible memory within the processor because I mean it's gonna consume space, right? When it consumes space, you add cost, right? I mean, people they don't want to buy too expensive uh, laptop, right? They want to have a good price and a good performance. So that's why they have to trade, right? So they have to trade. So they have to limit the the cash. That's why if you look into the specification, they have many levels. They have L1 cash, level one cash. They have L2 level two cash, right? All those things being done to um, increase the performance, right? So these are the two things, right? Okay, now go back into our uh, things that we try to understand here. Right, so this is what we have done last time, right? So main memory, main memory, right? So to go here, so normally it gonna take a few cycles, right? Which cannot be tolerated by the processor. So that's why they have cache and then they have register. So we are going to do the register today. Okay, but who going to control all those traffic here, right? So the input uh, from the register to ALU, what operation that ALU going to execute, right? Which value that you want to insert to the register, right? So let's say this is R1, right? register one, and this is R2. Yeah, okay, R2, right? So who going to control this? So that's why we are having a control, control unit, CU, right? So this control unit is the brain of the processor. Right. They, they, this is the, the one, the center that going to control the traffic. Like who going to flow in the ALU, right? So R1 going to flow in the ALU. And then who going to flow into the next input of the ALU, right? And then where the ALU output going to be sent to, right? Who going to control it? ALU. So which come to our lab today, right? So our lab today. Right, so this is our uh, control unit. So if you look here, I mean, these are all the signals that is needed. So later in your mini project, you're going to combine right all these codes so that it's going to perform uh, such as a simple processor. We just try to emulate. It's not going to be exactly uh, like a processor, but at least it can do basic function, you know, to receive input and then sending to the ALU and then process the the data and then send it keep it in somewhere in place in the in the memory right so that that's we are going trying to do right so here if you see here uh I mean all the operation is decided based on the op code right so if you guys remember right uh, if you guys uh you guys learn in uh micro p right so you have op code so op code stand for operation code right so it is operation code. Uh, so you have, for example, move, right, whatsoever. So uh, move, M, just MOV, right? right so let me just neglect that, this part. So MOV, move, right? So add, so these are all the op code, right? So add what? So add A1, right, to A2, and store it in A2 for an example, right? Okay, this is your the op code. So the op code is the one that can be understood by human, right? But what is actually, uh, you know, the computer they don't understand this, right? So that's why they understand 
the number. Right, so for an example, so LW is load word, right? So in the uh, in the uh, assembly language, but in terms of uh, binary, it is zero zero zero, right? So when when you when you give zero zero zero, so the computer understand. Okay, this is uh, load instructions, and the size that we're gonna load is word size, right? So okay, what is the signal that we have to activate? So for an example, register destination, we have to set it to zero. The ALU source, we have to set it to one, you know, to activate the ALU. And then MEM to register is one. So these are all the signals. So you, you are controlling. So you are controlling the, 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 the pass, you know, the signal, so the flow, everything from here. Okay, that is uh, load uh, word. And then here's store word. So what's going to happen? So... Uh, this is the ALU operation one zero right for example and then uh, here is the data processing so all these kind of things huh? so this is just try to emulate what is happening uh, inside a uh, processor right so we will try to do this part right so the control unit part so that you guys understand there's a unit that control the whole signal flow uh, in the processor so later when you combine it then you know so this is the main thing that you have to look into for the uh, to produce a uh, correct result all right any question before i move into the next part of the lab any question guys All right, so if no question, then uh, okay, now let's go into the second one. So the register part, right? Okay, register part. Let's open it. This one I've simulated. Okay, all right, guys. So, uh, let's look here, right? So, uh, okay, what's happening here is that, uh, all right, okay, let's see. Okay, this is our register, right? Okay, let's look at the code first. All right, so this is example, right? So that you guys, this is just example, right? I'm giving you guys so that you guys can can start from here, right? You can you 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 are welcome to change the code, you know, to try it, uh, so that you guys are going to understand it better. Okay, let's go one by one, right? So okay, this is our uh, uh module name, and right? so we have input talk. Okay, this is we are using another way of declaring it. So we just declare directly the type of uh, input that we are using. So first one is uh, input clock, and then input right, right uh, enable. Then we have three bits, right? From zero to two is three bits, right? Uh, register right destination. Then we have 16 bit of registered right data. And then we have input three bits, uh, which represent the register read address. Then we have output for uh, register read data one. Okay, if you guys look here, so we have one input, right, for the data, right? So this is a uh, right, right uh, destination, right? So we have uh, one input for inputting the data but for the output, the data, so we have two outputs. Okay, and then here, so we are declaring the size of array. So we have uh, eight register array and the size is 16 bit. So I mean, what is this line means is that so we have it location this is just example right so we have it location so one until it 
okay and then each size of the location is 16 bits right so that's what it meant by uh, this part okay and then uh okay right so initial begin so this is a four we are using four loop here so what is this part is doing so this part is you uh is to initialize right to initialize uh the value so we start from uh zero and then we go up until seven zero to seven because we have eight location and then it's going to increment one by one so what we are doing here is that we are going to set all the location into zero that means we are initializing it right so we want to set by default when we start the program so the initial value has to be zero inside the register location okay then here start always positive edge of the clock so it's going to be sensitive of the the changes will be uh, happening here right the, the one we did here will be happening uh, at the positive edge of the clock okay if reg, uh, register right is enabled then begin right? if you enable the register right then it's going to start to write the data so this is register right data so look here register right data here it is your uh, register right data his your input right so the one that you set so it is the size is 16 bit and then it's going to be written into register array which location based on your input register right destination register right uh, destination here so this is register right data and here is your register right destination which is uh, using three bits right uh, three bits uh, is good enough to cover from zero to eight uh, seven okay uh then what else okay now assign right so remember assign will always uh update it once you change uh, the value right so okay now here what happening is that you can output two value at one time so this is what it's doing so it's going to be taking from one source here but you have two point of output right so you have uh output one and you have output two so at one time you can take uh, the value from the same source and output it at the same time even you can take from the uh, similar uh, output so input source then send it to output right so what is being doing? okay now uh, that's done for the coding part okay let's go and look into the uh, result simulation all right okay so here's the uh, register read address so, uh, okay now uh, the register address uh, read address being set as 000, 000 000 okay but here at the moment we already trying to write to it right so we we try to write so here is our write destination so we are writing from uh, we are writing into location zero and the value that we are uh, writing is three right so let's say this is our memory okay let's, sorry, let's say it start from zero and here is seven so we are writing value three inside the first location All right so what happened if you guys see right so uh look here right so the 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 output value started to change uh at the positive clock here why because the writing part is completed at at the positive edge of the clock so for a sign i've told you uh, for a sign once the value is changes is gonna be automatically updated so that's why if you look into the waveform here so once you change once you have a value inside the register then it's automatically gonna be portrayed into your output right so that's why uh, you see here at location zero we are storing three value here at location one we are storing five value so that's why i'm trying but, but the thing is i'm trying to read from the same location right you can try to read from different location and to see that you're going to have a different value so that's for uh, the uh, register part right any question for the register part If you don't understand, just let me know, right? 
so it's better to let me know that you don't understand it rather than you just pretend to know but it's very dangerous that way Okay guys, so uh, no question. All right, so uh, okay, this one I'm not showing uh, you guys um, the what do you call it? Uh, I'm not gonna show you guys uh, the simulation of this part. You guys just uh, try to simulate it. All right later, I'll, I'll I'll try to explain. You know, so this is the ELU control part, which helps to control, uh, to pick, right, which ALU operation that you guys, uh, you guys want to execute based on the, uh, the input. Uh, no. No, no, it's not all in a single project because unless you want to connect all these modules together, then you can run it in a single project. Uh, so right now you can run it in a separate project but if you want to give a try to connect it right so you can do it you can be uh, based on your lab one to see how the connections can be done All right okay guys so i think there's an uh, explanation for lab four if you guys have any question let me know and then um, at the meantime you guys can try and to you know try to run it uh, and see uh, what you uh, can get. So here's the uh, instruction for lab four. Right, so I think I've uploaded it on the uh, your uh, what do you call it uh, Google Classroom. So go ahead and give it a try. Right. So I'll be here if you guys have any question until then. Just let me know. Right. Thank you guys. Uh, sir, this instruction is not inside the lab file. 